Hey YouTube, Peter Build Knife Guy. So, okay, yesterday I went off on a little bit of a rant about Buck. I do not regret it. I stand by what I said, um, at least for their old models. Um, they do have newer models. They are a little bit more expensive by quite a bit, actually. And, you know, I was like, well, all the gripes I had about this and, you know, just even the standard 110 version of, you know, brass or plastic, you know, mediocre, uh, mediocre steel, in my opinion, even with, even though it has a good heat treat, um, no, no one hand open care, you know, one hand opening, you know, so I was like, you know what, I'm going to go and, uh, let's upgrade and see if I like it any better. I'm going to give it a fair shake and at the end of it, if I still think that the uh, 110 is not a, uh, a viable EDC, <clears throat> I'm going to do an update video and let you guys know. So what I ended up getting was, let's see, is it on the package? Right there. It is the 110 Slim Pro TRX comes in a decent sleeve box because it's the pro so you know it's special and good um honestly they could have knocked a few bucks off the knife <clears throat> and not done such a fancy case because i mean i'm not i'm not one to keep my knife cases it, 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 with as many knives as i have they just take up i need a whole room just to store knife cases and i like to use my knives so i'm not going to just keep them and hide them uh in their case their whole life so i just i just get rid of them i'm gonna chuck this box after i'm done with this video here it does come with a nice little buck carrying case i don't know why why do you need one of these like a pair of sunglasses or something like that like what am i protecting it from i'm gonna put it in my damn pocket and use it whatever some people like that shit i could care less personal opinion oh yeah so yeah people were offended yesterday and I lost a couple subs and you know what if you unsubscribe because you don't like my honest opinion i didn't want you here to begin with so here we go this is the buck 110 slim pro trx they updated the pocket clip on this one uh i guess there was a previous version it did kind of have an atrocious pop pocket clip real big this one's actually quite nice um it's short, but it's not overly stiff. It's easy to get in and out of the pocket, which is nice. Um, fit and finish is, I wouldn't say perfect, but it's its decent. I don't know if you can see right, right there. There's like a chunk missing out of the G10. And the back of the knife, this little metal spacer is not flush. I don't know if that's a design or just a fit and finish issue. Let's see if you can see it. But yeah, that's whatever. I don't really don't care about that. Um, also too, it seems like when they bend the spring or whatever they do to make it fit the knife, um, it humps up right here. You can see, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it on camera, but right there, right, right above the screw. See how it's, you can see the gloss of it. You go all the way, you can see the gloss, the whole thing. It's got this weird hump in it and then dips down below the scales in the back. And then uh, right here in the middle. So it goes up, down, up, down. I, I don't know if the light is gonna show that. Yeah, you can see how that glint disappears and comes back. I, I don't know, because if you look at one of these, even this one is a much cheaper knife. Um, it's just a fluid smooth thing. So I don't know if they bend these to make them function properly while they're putting the knife together. Like, could I take the back spacer out of another, let's say 110 Pro and put it in here and would it fit? Are they individually fitted? I don't know. Um, <clears throat> another thing before we get into this, these thumb studs freaking atrocious they work but good god they're damn big look 
they stick out wider than the knife. I don't get that. I don't want the widest part of my knife to be the thumb stud. I want it to be, let's take her Ontario for, you know. And you know, Ontario has big thumb studs, but they're not wider than the knife. They're the same size as the knife. The bucks stick out. Um, I think they could have done a better job. I would much rather on this knife because it's, it's, you know, it's like a dual thumb studs. Fantastic. Give me one thumb stud with a screw on the back and I could swap sides because uh, that's just, it sticks up above the blade. And also too, in another video I watched up, if you're on a stone or something or something, that is gonna limit how steep you can make that angle, at least on the back part, or you're gonna be kind of sharpening. So when you lay it down, that's that's determining your angle and that's like the first part of the knife. Um, I think they could have made the stud just a little bit smaller. Um, and also too, slicing. If you're slicing into something like cardboard and you're back here pushing down, well now you're, cause look, I'm on the blade. Now your thumb stud's gonna be in the way. So, I don't know. I am changing the thumb, thumb stud on this after this video. I'm gonna put my own on there. But yeah, back to the knife. It is not your standard uh, Buck 110 blade. And not just because of the steel, but the shape of the blade itself. Um, this has more of a, like an abrupt drop, like a, like a, like a U-shaped drop point, And this is more of a flat. I actually, so if you look down, there is, I'm gonna focus on here. It's a straight clip point where this one has the standard version has like more of a U shape to it. I do like that better. Um, it doesn't seem to have, it's a hollow grind, but it's not a super shallow hollow grind. It's kind of more, I don't know, it may, it may be, I can't tell. It's hard to tell. It doesn't seem as shallow, but it might be. And overall, it's a tad shorter. I don't even know if this is going to show up in the video. There we go. It's a tad shorter than a standard 110. Uh, the blade length, I mean the handle length. So the handle on the TRX is a hair shorter, or I mean a hair longer. So if you line up the handles, it'll say right at the pins. The G10 handles are just a tad longer, but the standard blade is a tad longer. So overall, they're almost the same, but anyways. So I hated on Buck 110s yesterday real bad. And I was like, you know what? <clears throat> I'll go spend the money. We got G10 handle scales. They're very nicely done. Minus that little nick in the back there that I don't know how that got there. Um, other than that, the machining is done pretty good on them. This one is completely disassemblable. You can take this knife completely apart and clean it or adjust the pivot, which is nice because, <clears throat> you know, some knives, that, like this knife, if it had a little bit of wobble or you wanted to tighten it up, you couldn't do it before without repainting it or possibly messing it up. But now, just like other knives, you've got an adjustable pivot screw, which I like. Second problem I found so far is the distance from the thumb stud to the pivot. Um, if you look at this rat one, it's very, very closer, very, very much closer. Sorry, my grammar sucks, but it makes for something where your thumb can follow this out the whole way. This buck 110, right about there. And I ran, I run, I run out of thumb length and I have big hands. So, but I have to grip up higher. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It's just it's just not a it's not natural feeling to open this up. Like right there. That's as far as let's close it again. Let's see. This is how I would just like I would hold this knife right here. You know, works fine. This guy, if I would hold the same way, I run out of push right about there. 
I, you know, you can swing it back, but it just, it's not a fluid opening like even, like this guy. It's just not, it's, it's, it's much better <clears throat> than trying to open one without a thumb stud, but not, uh, not perfect. If they would have brought this thumb stud back behind the grind line, right? I know why they put it there because, but they could have milled a little section of this G10 and put that thumb stud right there. And I wouldn't be having these complaints. Um, S30V on this model. That was my other complaint about the other knife. Dinosaur steel. We actually have good steel. Uh, the boss heat treat they do on it, you know, is, is really good heat treat, you know, but, uh, still, I still want a premium steel. Um, lightness, this thing is almost as light as this guy. Thinness, this is the same thickness as a regular 110. It's much thinner. But look at here, fit and finish issues. You see that gap right there? don't like this gap look at that that is a fit and finish issue in my opinion and a quality control issue for a knife that they're asking i paid 110 dollars for this um i do not i do not like that am i gonna give it away or throw it away because of it no it's just nitpicky stuff that once you get into what they call their pro series Right, you want to call it pro series. Um, put some pro into it, other than uh, just the materials. A little bit of pro workmanship. Um, I don't know if I just got a flawed knife, but neither here nor there. Uh, out of the box sharpness. I haven't cut anything with it yet. I imagine it's on par with Buck. Buck usually does do a good job at sharpening their knives. Yeah, very sharp out of the box, as to be expected. Um, you know, this one was too, I've actually dropped this one, but they're both very, very extremely sharp. Um, so yeah, that is the Buck 110 Pro, uh, TRX, Slim Pro TRX. And it's a good looking knife. Don't get me wrong. Thumb studs are atrocious, though. I mean, look at it. It's like big fat nipples on there. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. But it's like... It's like it's got like... I don't know, like a Princess Leia bun or something. You know, with the big round things on both sides. That is the ugliest thumb, th thumb studs I've ever seen. But other than that, and the nitpicky little fit and finish stuff, uh, I feel, you know, for... It was 99 99.99 at a local store around here. Um, out the door. Out the door, I paid uh, $110.24 um, for the quality that I got and the materials. I, I, it was a good deal. I, I was actually quite shocked. I figured at least 120 bucks and then tax. Um, but yeah, there you go. We're gonna give this a fair shake and all my complaints I had about this one yesterday, if uh, if I end up falling in love with this thing, uh, I will make an apology video to Buck because I was pretty hard on him yesterday about, you know, being hidden under a rock and not sticking up with the times, you know, you, you gotta listen to your customer base. And you know, these old customers, these old timers, they're dying off or, they're not going out hunting and fishing anymore. And you got these new guys that are into, you know, stuff like this. If you don't stick with the times, um, you're, you're going to go out and you're going to go the way of the dinosaurs. <laughs> this is what it is. If everybody else is using a super steel or a more modern steel and you're stuck in 1940s banging out leaf springs, uh, which don't get me wrong, 5160 is some good steel, but, uh, you get my point. Um, uh, you're gonna get you're gonna get washed away and we don't want that we all grew up with buck knives we all love buck knives the nostalgia of a buck 110 you can't beat it 
and uh, yeah, time will tell if I end up loving this thing or not. Thanks for watching.